G'day, I'm Gavin from Hurley's Fly Fishing and welcome to another episode of On The Fly. Today we're up on the Murrindindi Creek, which is a lovely river not far from Yay up in northeast Victoria. It's quite a small stream, but it's loaded full of fish. So we're uh, looking forward to walking up here and, and throwing our trusty uh, rubber leg stimulator, put a nymph underneath it as well, and hopefully a few of these fish like it. I get asked a lot, what gear do I use on all of our adventures here? What I start with, I've got a Stalker Legend. This is a seven foot six two weight. It's ideal for these smaller rivers. So you do a lovely presentation at perhaps at times smaller fish. Still gives them an, uh, an equal fighting chance and it's great fun to use. I use often a Galvin Reel. This is a little brookie, which is extremely lightweight for this style of fishing. A dull colored line is ideal. So it doesn't frighten the fish. When that line lands, it might seem like a a leaf or a, a stick off a gum tree and it doesn't frighten them. I always wear waders. I like staying dry and it gives you added protection around a lot of this bush here, which could have some, some little prickly little items at times. Boots are very important. Because you're in the river all the time, you want something that's gonna give you really good um, grip as you're, you're wading up and down there. I have the Orvis um, Pros, they're a great boot with a Michelin sole, so it really grips well. And I also put a new Rock Bite Stalker studs in them, and that gives uh, that extra grip needed on some of these mossy rocks. I wear gloves for sun protection, our, uh, our new hat, which also the wide brim gives excellent sun protection, and our new FlexFit um, uh, buff, which comes over, has a uh, holes in the front to be able to breathe out of and also is a cutaway design so it comes down in a, a v-neck uh, type top and protects against sun, sun uh, sunburn uh, i've got the the trusty pack which carries everything from your, your drink and your net uh, and you've virtually got everything that you're going to need i always use a wading staff as well so just at times this just gives you that extra third leg which uh, keeps you upright most of the time so once you have all the right gear you're set to tackle it, whether it be the Murrindindi, could be you know the Goulburn, could be any river in the world. Once you've got that right gear set up, you're going to be successful. Now we've got to the river. We've got a lovely little run here with a, a, a few bubbles coming through, and it's quite deep. It's a pretty hot day. We're about 30 degrees. It means two things. It means there's going to be a lot of um, grasshoppers around, which the um, rubber leg stimulator will imitate. That can work, but also the water. Whilst it is cool because it's um, flowing through a quite a canopy covered um, area, it's still warm through the heat. So what we want to do is put a nymph on as well to go a little bit deeper along these runs here. And there could be a fish sitting down deep in the cooler water. So just a couple of bob each way by having that nymph. But if it's successful, then it's well worth that extra bit of trouble. Nice little uh, bit of water. It's quite shallow, but the, the river's flowing relatively quickly, so it'll oxygenate it, and the trout will be quite happy sitting on the side here. And we've always uh, that trout like Labradors, they'll only exercise if they have to, and they would uh, much rather just get food brought to them. So the, um, the trout will sit here just on the edge of the fast water, uh, and when they see a bit of food, they can duck into the fast water, get it, and then duck back, back out and have a bit of a spell. So uh, concentrate your cast next to sort of the bubble line area and you're gonna be successful. Right, we've got a lovely little run here on the left-hand side of this tree. A little bit of extra depth. We'll just run a couple of casts through there.
with a lot of water in Australia, it is simply prospecting. You find a good little area like this and go, well, it could hold a fish. At times you will see them if they're uh, larger fish or if they're perhaps on a sandy bottom. But most of the time you're just doing casts in areas that you think could hold a fish. And if it doesn't, well, you haven't lost anything and you just move on. Generally in these smaller waterways, a couple of casts and they'll let you know where there's a fish there. He's either taken your fly or he hasn't. He's not there and move on. There we go. I could see actually that little fish follow that down. And uh, uh, yeah, that's the benefit of having good Polaroid glasses. And he's only a, a little fella, obviously, but we'll get him in the net. And they all count. I keep saying size doesn't matter. And uh, you fish small streams, it definitely doesn't matter. But it's great fun if, if it unfolds visually for you. I think that's the beauty of fly fishing. You've cast up there a likely little spot and you watch this fish, you see a flash underneath your fly and go, I reckon he's after my nymph and sure enough the indicator goes down and he's got in his mouth strike and there's a fish on the end. It just makes it all worthwhile. And that's a beautiful little fish for a river like this. I mean, realistically, you could jump over it and not get your feet wet. That's a great little fish to get um, almost straight away, you know. So, uh, and I'm sure there's bigger ones up here and a few of his friends will be up there as well. So uh, the main thing is you get off a duck and at least you half know what you're doing. So uh, we'll get him out and give you a closer look and show you what these Murrindindi trout look like. Love that tool. Catch and release. Just gets that fly out without really needing to touch the fish. And uh, if you're fishing and not making a TV show, you, you can let them go without even uh, touching the, uh, the trout. We'll just get him out here. And the beauty of net, you've, you've netted him while he's still got plenty of go in him. Lovely little fish, red spots. They're just a stunning little uh, fish that's adapted. He's good to go straight away. You just hold him there until they get a little bit of power and he'll swim off like he, you can feel him now. He's good to go. And that's fantastic. So uh, that's worked out pretty well. A good little start, lovely little uh, stream. And just fish like... Uh, need a little bit of depth for a little bit of safety, cool water, and they're gonna be happy. Nice little spot here, bit of depth. That water bangs uh, around the corner into that tree. Nice little bubble line. If we can get our casts between it. We're hoping for a nice little brown or rainbow. And you've got to watch your dry fly like a hawk and you've got to expect it to uh, be dipping. There we go. And uh, we'll st oh, and just got off, but not to worry. But you've got to watch that dry like a hawk and expect that to dip at any time. And uh, sometimes it will just hit a rock or it could be a stick and you've got to strike like it is a fish. And every now and then it is and they get off. It doesn't really matter. But uh, the main thing is like that fish eats for a living. And we've uh, convinced him that that's food, you know, which is pretty good effort, you know, at the best of times. But particularly when they get away, you say that's a moral victory. Some might say it's not a victory at all, but when they get away, it's a moral victory. There we go. And uh, even little pocket water like this. We'll, uh, we might use the net a little fella over. Uh, and we're just walking up, it's a tiny little river. So uh, these smaller fish don't need massive big pools either. I mean, that's a, um, a couple of meters squared, but that's enough to keep this fish in with enough food uh, to keep him going, so uh, that was fine. They're pretty aggressive. You know, first cast uh, there, he decided, yeah, I'm gonna eat that. Uh, so that's pretty good. So um, 
even small bits of water, don't just jump past them. One or two casts in there and you're gonna know if there's a fish there. And every now and then there is. Perfect little tool. We'll get this fish out and send him on his way. Lovely little brown. And just great fun. This plenty of red spots on that one. Terrific little fish. You just make it uh, worthwhile to walk up a river. And every now and then, I mean, you don't need to catch a million fish. Makes a bit of TV show funny enough if you do, but if you don't, not the end of the world, but if you catch a, a fish every now and then in a lovely little pool like that, that uh, you've thought about. Uh, and I reckon that's the, one of the great things about fly fishing. You know, you don't just cast a worm out and fall asleep. You look at a bit of water, you imagine there might be a fish there because of this reason, this reason, this reason. Put your fly in there and when they take it, that's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. So, pretty cool. And to get to release them as well, that's ideal. So, um, yeah, I think we keep going and find another one. Even the cows have heard about on the fly. They're coming over just to see how it's uh, all filmed. Pretty interested. And when we get to uh, a section of river like this, I'll assess it and go, right, the ideal spot is right through that bubble line, which is literally straight up the center there. You can see the bubbles where it cascades up there. You know, it's gonna put all the food in one sort of escalator line, and the fish will either sit right in that or just on either side. The water is not flowing that hard, so they can sit right in that, but it's got enough depth where they can spread out throughout the, the entire width of this pool. So you want to methodically work your way through this because this could seriously hold six to ten fish. So uh, start at the back, work your way up a couple of metres at a time and, and uh, don't willy-nilly on either side. Cast on one side and work your way along and then go up further, work your way along again like in a grid system. Uh, and this is a hole where you could literally pull out three or four fish. Lovely little run here. We've got a little bit of a back cast as well. So uh, when, let this flow through here. Come on fish. When uh, you, you've got to do a, uh, a short cast, literally with no line out, sometimes it looks like you're trying to kill a snake with a stick. But uh, when you do have uh, room for a bit of back cast, make it much, much easier to cast and to put some distance into your cast as well. Nice bit of water just up near the, uh, this log hits the water. There we go, oh, oh, couldn't get it in his mouth. I saw him come up and uh, try and grab it. Smaller fish, they're actually harder to catch than bigger fish. Uh, and he's come up to take it and he may well have just got near the tail or whatever, but didn't really engulf it. Um, yeah, well, sort of a take. Would have been much better if he had a hung on. But Browns generally won't take it twice. Once he knows that food, he won't take it. But we've still got a nymph on there as well. And he might go, oh, well, I'll eat that while it's there. Like that, and beautiful, lovely little fish. And that's what it can be like, even though you get virtually that, uh, like a take, but you don't hook him up, it pays to put that other cast in there. You could change dry flies. Oh, and he's got a bit of go. And that's the beauty of a little two weight. Come on, mate, and we'll get him in the net. A little two weight makes it great fun. Sort of puts things in their favor a little bit, trying to steer them around. Uh, and it makes it, yeah, just an incredible fun walking up a tiny little stream like this. It's just wonderful. We've had rosellas running around here, or they might have even flown, but lovely, stunning countryside. And uh, to get a few fish like that's ideal. And to see him come up and take the, the dry, but not really commit, but persist with another couple of casts. Because we've got that nymph on there, he'll know that that dry fly is not food, but he hasn't tasted that nymph yet. And sure enough, a couple more casts over there with the nymph. 
and he goes, well, I'll have that too. So that's pretty cool. And he's a, he's a lovely little fish. Um, it'd easily be a pound or, or so. And on the uh, McLean's lie detector, you can find out. And he's just on a pound and a quarter, which is a, a lovely little fish in a stream like this. So, uh, yeah, makes it all worthwhile when you get, you know, a fish like that in the net. Just proves you're doing a couple of things right. Great fun. Lovely uh, Murundindi brown. Just on a pound and a quarter. Stunning fish. All these lovely red spots on the side. They're just such a beautiful fish. And uh, just great fun on light gear. You know, a little two weight. Perfectly suited. And I think uh, fly rods are a little bit like golf clubs. You could play a whole round with a five iron, but uh, she's pretty hard to putt with, hard to drive with. Same with fly rods. So uh, they're just a little bit like ladies' shoes. You can never have too many. That's ladies, of course, not myself, but uh, yeah, a couple of fly rods to suit the areas you're gonna be fishing. And you can be a lot more successful because they just work. They're made for those sort of areas. And here we go, see? Plenty of power left in there, so that's beautiful. So pretty good result. You look at a piece of water and you judge it. You go, it's got depth, you got a little bit of cover, good flow. I reckon that would hold a fish. And then you put your casts, you know, um, into those areas and you see him take it, but not commit. And then you come up with another theory. Maybe you'll take the nymph and you're still a chance. And sure enough, a couple of casts there and he took it. And I think, well, to me, that's what fly fishing is about, you know, so you can assess the situation, make decisions accordingly, and every now and then they work and you look like a superstar. Just have a couple more casts. We didn't get one right out of the, the top of the pool. And this water could certainly hold a couple of fish. And what we've also found, if say that was the, uh, the king fish of this pool, there might be a smaller fish that will take up hit that spot once the bigger fish goes and has a sook under that log. So uh, pays to have a couple of quick casts in the area. Just in case. we go and right in the same spot and that's happens on enough occasions that it makes you uh, want to do it again and again so you would imagine that fish being a pound and a quarter he's going to be the king and he, that might be a really good place to um, to stay and station himself there might be a rock under there and he'll sit there can duck out and all the foods brought right next to him this little fish gets kicked out of the way all the time. So he might have to sit in the bushes or out in the heart of water. And uh, when the big brother gets taken out, he goes and sits at the head of the table where the food's pretty good. And uh, yeah, again, that's what I'm talking about. You just, if you, you've got to think a little bit more when, you, when you're fly fishing. And uh, sometimes it works, you know, just like that did. So again, a lovely little fish. We'll get him out. And really uh, love that nymph and it just pays to have uh, a couple of of each way by having that dry in the nymph it just gives them the choice particularly even on a hot day there might be some uh, in insects around come on mate that's it um, creating like a hatch you know so they might be on top but those insects start off as little nymphs as well so they might be moving at the moment prior to hatching so uh, a couple of of each way and you get him to take, beautiful. Uh, just stunning little fish, even the small ones, they look exactly the same, like twins, just smaller. Good, perfect, excellent. Couple of fish without really taking any steps. That's pretty good fly fishing. Now, when I am walking between pools, I always hook that fly up before uh, you traipse off. There's nothing worse than le leaving it unhooked and dragging. 
and walking through, I guarantee you it'll hook on every stick or, or rock that's um, in the way once you're up in a place ready to cast. As well as it um, drowns your dry fly, so next time you cast it, it'll sink. So hook it back up so you're ready to cast as soon as you uh, get to your next location. Now it's about 20 past seven. We're at the end of the day and we've still got to uh, set up camp around at uh, uh, the camping spots on the Murundindi, which are fabulous by the way. And every corner we go around, there's always one more pool that looks really good, but we've had to put a limit on it. So uh, this is the last pool that we're gonna fish. So with a bit of luck, we can get the last fish of the day out of the last pool we fish. And you'd reckon the fish would help us out, wouldn't you? Nope, and nothing. So uh, I think I've got to honour that that was the last pool. So. Um, yeah, it's been a pretty eventful day. I've really enjoyed it on fishing new water, uh, the Murundindi. Funny enough, an hour and a half out of Melbourne and it's the first time I've fished it. It's a stunning river and it changes throughout the, the course of it. Higher up to where a lot of the camp spots are, it's a lot more rockier, a bit gorgier, um, bouldery and little pools, which are short little cars, short drifts, but some, surprisingly some big fish through there, so I'm told. Um, down lower it's a little bit slower going um, and some lovely runs and as, you, as you've seen some really good fish as well so I think it's quite important that you do fish new waters from time to time otherwise you can only be disappointed fishing the same old water if that fish that you always catch is no longer there. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. It's been terrific bringing it to you, coming up to, to fish the, the northeast rivers. I really enjoy it up here. The size of the fish doesn't really matter. A light little rod like that, the Stalker Legend in a two weight, really suits the situation and is great fun. So uh, yeah, it's been pretty cool. So I'll look forward to catching you next time on the fly.